Hey everybody, today I'm going to show you how you can pull in historical stock prices and returns by month for a given stock. So the purpose of this would be to see if certain months of the year historically, you know, stock like Apple has done better in than others. And so what I'm going to do is utilize Google Sheets' stock or, or Google Finance function. And so how it works is just type in equals Google Finance. For the ticker, I'm just going to use Apple's ticker symbol. The attribute is going to be the price. And then the start date, I'm going to set it to use the today function and then subtract 4,000 days, just so I'm going way back into the, into the past. The end date is going to be today. Close this. And so that way these are variables, so they'll automatically adjust based on today's date. I'm going to hit enter and now the Google Finance function does its work and now I've got Apple's historical returns or historical prices going back to 2011. Now the one thing I'm going to want to do is adjust these dates because right now they contain a time element which I want to get rid of. So I can do that using the date function. So the date function takes a year, a month, and a day argument. And there's also formulas for each one of those um, for those values as well. So for instance, I can pull the year using the year function from here. So that's going to give me the year in A2. For the month, I can use the month function. And for the day, I'm going to use the day function. So that looks correct. That looks fine. I don't have the time. The one thing I'm going to make an adjustment for is create an if statement at the beginning to say, you know, if this is blank, then basically do nothing, otherwise run that calculation. And now I can copy this all the way to the bottom. So now I've got date values that I can use. And so how I'm going to use this to compute monthly returns is I'm going to create a, a value for each month of the year. So January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, and December. So what I'm also going to do actually is put in the, the years going down. So let's say 2021 minus one, all the way until I get to 2011. Okay. So for January 2021, what I could do is use an index and match formula. So it works just the same as you would use it in, in Excel. As in, as in Google Sheets. So for the index function, I'm pulling the value from column B, and now I'm gonna use the match function to pull in the row value. And so for the match function, what I'm gonna do is use the date value. And how that date value works is I can basically create a date string. So in this case, I've got the start of the month written out here and so I can say January ampersand and then put in quotes one comma ampersand 2021 that's my date value that I'm going to look up and the range I'm going to look up is column C okay and I'm going to put in a value of one because I'm not looking for an exact match and then for the column number it's going to be set to one so this is going to give me a value of 132.69, and this would be for January 1st of 2021. So let's check to make sure this uh, looks right. So I go to January. There's not a January 1st, but the closest is December 31st, 132.69, which is the value that I've got. And so I'll show you how this date value calculation works. So date value, it says, okay, I've got January an ampersand one comma one and then the year and so how this works is I'm going to change this so you can see the date format January 1 2021 it's basically taking this value f2 so it's, it'd be the same as saying instead of f2 I did Jan 1 comma 2021 so let's get rid of that E3 and replace it with 2021. So that's the equivalent of what I'm doing here. 
is using that as my date value. So if I put in Jan com space one, comma space 2021, then that's the same as what I've done here, except here I'm using variables. So it's gonna be easier to update and obviously that avoids me having to write in this every single time I'm using the date value. And I can also adjust this formula a bit to say, let's say I wanna get the end of the month. So then I can use the EO month function and then put an argument of zero to say, I don't want to go any months forwards or backwards. I just want the current month end. And that gives me January 31st, 2021. So that's what I'm going to do here is in this index, I'm going to do a match, not of just the, the first day of the year. I'm going to pull the end of the month and then comma zero, and then do a lookup on that. So now I'm gonna be looking for January 31st, 2021. So if I go down here, make sure I've got, so January 29th is the closest, and that's 131.96, which is what I've got. So that looks to be okay. The next thing I'm gonna do is now compare this to the previous month's closing price. So in this case, January 31, 2021, that's the ending value, but I want to compare this to, to the month before to see how it did. So what I can do here is do a copy and then divide this by the value of minus one for the month argument here. So this time it's going to go a month backward. It's going to compare to December 31st. So it's gonna take January 31st price divided by December 31st value. And then I'm gonna do minus one to calculate the percentage change. So I'll prove this out in a second here. So it gives me a return of minus 0.55%. So, so a quick way to check. So January 31st price we had was 131.96. Just type that in there. And then December 31st, a month prior, would be 132.69. So if I take the January 31st price, divide it by the end of the previous month, December 31st, 2020, that's 0.99. And if I minus the one, that tells me it's a percent change of negative 0.55%. So that looks to be correct. So I just wanted to prove that calculation out to you. And so now what I can do is go to the next part and that's copying these formulas down and across. But before doing so, I need to take the important step of freezing these, the, these cells. So column B, this needs to be frozen because I'm never changing that one. Column or, or value F2. So this needs to always stay at the top. So I'm gonna freeze the number. So F2 dollar sign two, freezing the number. E3, I'm freezing column E. Okay, column C, freezing the entire column. And then the same thing here. So the key is making sure we're freezing the right cells and columns when we copy this over. So now I'm gonna drag this down and 2011 is not gonna have a value because this only moves back to February. But you know what I could do is do minus, let's say, Let's say 4,200 just to go further back. There we go. And so now I can copy this down. So now I've got um, 2011's, val 2011's values in there as well. So now you can see it looks like it's updating nicely. So it's referencing January and 2018. It's still referencing these columns. And now I'm able to see the returns by, by month. And now so what I can do is copy this across all the way to December. And now I've got my percentage returns by by every single month. But right now this still looks like a big blob of data. So it's hard to really make sense of these numbers. So one thing you could do is add some conditional formatting. So if you go to conditional formatting, you know, we can um, use a color scale, right? So we have the minimum values as, let's say, uh, let's say uh, a light red and the max values being a dark green or perhaps something a bit lighter and then 
percentile being white. So something like this. So we've got, you know, extremely high values being green and, and really low values being red. So some conditional formatting there to sort of conceptualize, okay, which months look to be um, the better ones for the stock versus the, the worst ones. Another thing that you could do is, let's say, calculate a winning percentage, uh, percentage of the months. Um, let's say the percentage of Januarys where Apple returned a, a a positive positive return. And so what we could do there is just use a count if function. So I'm going to say first call this winning percentage and use a count if function to say, okay, look at these values here and look at when they were greater than zero and then and then divide that by using the count a function, just counting all the values that have a value and put this into percentages. So 54% of the time, you know, Apple had a positive return in January. So now let's compare this to the other months of the year, right? So we can see July looks to be, you know, the month where it consistently ha has a, a positive return. Another thing we could also do is calculate an average. And so for and so for the average, it's as simple as using the average function and then pulling that across. And so now we can see that you know in July, you know, it, it's typically a really good month for Apple, you know, obviously coming after their their earnings report around that time. And so there could be other factors, seasonal factors, whatever the case may be, that it typically does does well. It's not a guarantee that that's going to happen, but obviously this helps you conceptualize okay you know, how it typically does one month compared to another. You know, and if we were to look at a month where it doesn't do well, you know, September looks like a like a a bit of an off month for it, where it's where it's usually negative, and you know, there's only been a couple couple years where that month's been been positive for the stock and so remember this is just looking at the end of the month so I mean it, it could be skewed depending on you know how it did the the previous month or you know could have rebounded the, the following day this is strictly looking at the end of one month versus the end of the previous month so the point of this just to give you an idea you know if you're looking for short-term trades to see okay which stocks typically do better at you know which part of the of the year and so you can change this obviously i've used i've used apple and as as an example but you know you could swap this out and use amazon instead and they just have to wait for the calculations to to re-update and you know amazon's a, a bit uh you know maybe a bit more more consistently positive, but a similar story in July typically does well, and April's also a pretty good month for them historically. So you can play around with that, and uh, you know use different tickers to try to s try to identify any sort of trends that may help you when uh, buying or selling stocks. And so that's how we can pull in these historical returns using variables. You know, it's, it gives us a lot of flexibility as far as how this is is done. So if you like this video, if you'd like to see more of these types of things on stocks and returns, please uh, give this video a like and post something in, in the comments to that effect. Otherwise, hope you found this video useful and uh, thank you very much for, for watching.